Hello there, it's Sarah from Paper Lovely. Thanks for joining me today. I'm going to be creating a goodie box tower, and I was inspired to do this by something that Bambi Deer created. I'm going to link her channel below. Um, and she has recently posted a tutorial of how to put this together and that once I saw it I had to give it a try. It is absolutely gorgeous and so much fun to create. So I'm not going to go through all the measurements and everything here. Um, she explains this really really well um, and it was very easy to put together. I did end up putting my lid and my little boxes on the inside together slightly differently than she did, so I will talk you through that, um, but otherwise I have made this exactly the same way that she made hers. So right here I'm just starting by getting everything cut out and then going through and doing all of my scoring. I then took my pieces to my sewing machine and just did a little bit of stitching around the four side panels and across the sort of faux um, little piece that's going to hold the box together. And then these are the little shelf boxes that go inside and this here is going to be the lid. So here's how mine is going to vary slightly from how she put hers together. I'm still going to cut up here in between the rectangle and the square, just going up to that score line there and cutting out a little wedge on either side. Now how she put hers together is that she would do that for one square on all four of the sides. I'm going to do this for two squares on two of the sides and the reason I'm doing that is because I want to fold each of those tabs in. And that's going to make sure that my stitched lines connect all the way around the corner. I wanted to have two flaps tucked in on each side rather than one. Otherwise, my stitched lines weren't going to match up the way that I wanted them to. And what I'm telling you will make more sense if you watch her tutorial. Uh, so here I've got these completed. There you can see how my lines are going to match all the way around there. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the little box shelves that are going to go inside the tower. So I just stitched along one of the edges here that's going to be my outside edge. And so I want to make sure that that's one of the sides that I'm going to cut the two uh, squares on either side of. That way I know for sure that those are going to be tucked in behind that. And then when I position this inside the tower, I'll make sure that that side with the embroidery is going to be on the front. So I've gone ahead and continued to cut all of those little wedges on each of the different box shelves and now I'm going to start putting everything together. So I'm using score tape. For me this is the strongest adhesive. I know that liquid glue is also really strong but it takes longer to dry and I was afraid that things would slip so I'm going to go with score tape on this. And I've added a piece of half inch score tape right down the center of each of these tabs and then I'm taking eighth of an inch right along the edge of each of them. I'm going to make sure all of that tape is down nice and tight. And now I'll start putting the box lid together. So I'm going to peel away the tape on two of the tabs. And then here I'm going to fold these in. So I'm just folding that behind the rectangle and making sure that the edges line up to make a nice corner. And then I'll make sure that's down nice and tight. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other end. 
So the last tab is a little bit tricky. I am still gonna take off the adhesive on both edges here, but when I, I'm gonna leave the one hanging out and there I'll do that third corner and that way I don't get anything stuck as I'm in the wrong place as I'm placing those down. Again, just making sure that's nice and secure. And then here you can see how that lid is gonna fit on top of the larger piece to create the tower. So I'm gonna do this again here for the shelves that are gonna go on the inside of the tower. Again, placing down the half inch score tape in the center, and then I will run the eighth inch score tape on either edge of that little wedge. Again, I'll go ahead and make sure that that's all down nice and secure. And then I'll peel away the backing on one side. And tuck those flaps behind the rectangle, making sure that my edges match up to make a nice point. And then I'll repeat that on the other side, just making sure that's down nice and secure there. And you could do this just one flap at a time if you found it easier. I think it's easier if you take the backing off of both at the same time. And again, I'll tuck those behind and make sure I have a nice corner on both edges. And that's gonna complete the little box shelf that will go inside the tower. Now I'm gonna add the band that's gonna go around the outside. So I'm doing a half inch on one end and then an eighth of an inch on the other. And then just going back over my score lines there. And this is going to wrap right around that larger piece. So I'm going to remove the backing from just a little section of it first. And I've left the lid on there so that I made sure I had that in the middle with the lid down on. I didn't want it to be too close to the lid. So there I pulled away the rest of the backing and then placed that down. And here I'm going to insert the shelves. So this is a little bit tricky, and I think the next time I do this, I will go ahead and actually add this score tape before I put the box together. Um, I was able to you know, make sure that it was down nice and tight with my bone folder, but I think it just probably would be easier if I did that first. So I'm taking this bottom shelf and I'm lining that up right along the bottom of this cardstock. I, I wanna make sure that it's nice and lined up because it is gonna create the base of the box. So you wanna make sure it's nice and sturdy. And then as this folds around, you wanna make sure that you're lining up the next shelf so that it will fold or slide in on top of the previous one. So I started out there with at the bottom and then added the second one. And then here I'm going to skip to the top. And again, I'm gonna line up the edge of the box right along the edge of that larger panel. And it is slightly smaller than the spot that has been scored. So I'm just placing the box right in the center of those two score lines. And then again here, I'm making sure that everything's gonna fold properly and then I'll place that third box in. This is gonna be the little tab that's sort of, it's sort of a fake closure, but it, it does help to keep the box closed. Um, so I've just scored that. I left about an inch of that to slide over the corner to the other side. And here I'm sort of just working on a layout. I'm gonna place down some of these pieces of ephemera. And then once I get those back layers in place, I'm gonna glue down that little flap there. So 
so I'm just gluing it on the one side and then here on the back of this I'm gonna grab some of my little coin uh, velcro dots Oh, there I saw my papers were coming apart a little bit so I'm adding some glue just a little bit in between there and now I'll take my velcro dots and the way that I do this is I actually attach the dots together on one side and then I'll fold that over that way I know that everything is going to be lined up uh, perfectly again just making sure those are down and then I'm going to continue on decorating my box on the outside as well as the inside so at this point, I'm going to turn up the music and let you enjoy the process as I finish everything up. And then I will be back at the end to walk you through the finished project. Okay, so this is the finished goodie tower box. Here I'm giving you a look at the outside. I added a little bit there on top of the box lid, and then you saw for the most part there how I decorated the front. When you take off the lid, you can then remove this little sort of faux flap helping to keep it closed. And then this is so cute. I think it would be so nice to sit on top of a craft desk or even on top of your vanity because this is travel themed. Uh, you could save some seashells or sand or just things that remind you of a trip. I think it would just be so nice to just keep little memories in. So I'm not sure who I'm going to be giving this to yet. Um, so I did just sort of fill it up to give you an idea of things that you could do. I've made some little mini rosettes here and then trimmed out um, or used a one inch circle punch to go through some of the smaller pattern papers and trimmed out some circles to place in the center there. I've also added in some washi as well as a roller stamp and then I used some more of the papers from the collection to create some little bows to stick in that last box. And then there's a final look at the inside of the box. 
So once again, guys, I'm going to link the original tutorial or original tutorial to me uh, on Bambadir's channel below. Make sure you go check that out. And if you really like this type of Happy Mail project, you're going to love her channel. It's full of loads of great inspiration. And she also uses a lot of Maggie Holmes products as well. So this project was a bit difficult to photograph, but I have done the best I could for you. I've got a few close-ups here, and of course in the description box below you'll find my blog post which has additional photos and links to the supplies I used. Remember to leave me a comment below so you can be entered in the March Madness giveaway. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.